Okay, this is a video tutorial to help walk you through the procedure of how you use this interface to measure the equivalent widths of absorption lines in stellar spectra. I'm going to do this in the context of the homework, but we can use it to measure any elemental lines. The homework asks you to compare the strengths of two lines, a hydrogen line at 4861 angstroms and a calcium line at 3935 angstroms. And from the comparison of those two line strengths, or a ratio of the two, try and determine the spectral type of the star for three unknown stars. So how do we do this? Well, first you're given the wavelength of the hydrogen lines. It's at 4861 angstroms. Now the angstrom scale is down here on the x-axis, and the spectra have a resolution of every five angstroms. So you cannot measure cursor positions to an accuracy better than 5 angstroms. So we know what the wavelength of the feature is. It's 4861. So let's try and find that. Well, we look here. That's probably it, between 4750 and 5000. But we can also bring up a wavelength flag by hitting step 2. The number up there in the box is wavelength. In this case, it's 4000 angstroms. We can slide that over to there. 4860, that must be the hydrogen line at 4860 angstroms. In this particular star, it's obvious. So now I want to make a window, a measuring window for the line. So I want to define the beginning or the left hand side of the feature and the end or the right hand side of the feature. So I'll just drag this, say, to there. This could be any arbitrary position with respect to this line. I could be all the way over here, but that would be silly. You want to build a relatively tight window. Now click step three, find the end of the feature, and sort of drag this around there. So now we have a window in which the feature appears, and now we can zoom in on this to make more precise measurements. So we hit the zoom button, and we can see some up and down and some up and down in there, and that's just part of the stellar atmosphere. Um, and Defining the beginning and the end of the feature is difficult. It's difficult in real life as a professional scientist. You just sort of have to guess. So maybe the beginning of the feature is there and the ending of the feature, say, might be around there. So now we want to find the reference level because that's our measurement, that's our number, that's our equivalent width that we're going to use to compare the strength of this line to the strength of the calcium line. So we click Find Reference Levels. And this reference level needs to be placed on both sides of your window, outside of your window. And that will measure the relative strength of the line. So the left-hand side measurement is 5.6. The right-hand side measurement is 5.7. In this case, they're about the same. You would average the two. So some number like 5.6 or 5.7 would be the right number for the strength of this line. Now notice this is going to change depending on where you put it. It's supposed to because the vertical distance of the reference point is changing. So don't be freaked out about the fact that it changes when you move it slightly. It's supposed to. Okay, so we've measured the strength of the hydrogen line. Now we want to see if this particular star has a feature at calcium, 3935 angstroms. So let's reset the spectra. I know I want to be at 3935, so I can get over there. With that, that looks like it might be close, and so let's make a new window. You can see the spectra is kind of messy here. It's real life. Got to deal with it. So we can make that window, and now we can zoom in. The zoom function is kind of a little bit broken on the left side of the spectra, but that doesn't really matter. But you can see this complicated up and down is due to a lot of different lines. Now the line we're interested in here is this 3935 line, but there's also another strong line at 3965, 3970, which is another calcium line, but we're not interested in measuring that. So our window has to be fairly tight here. We can't include the other line in it. This makes the measurement difficult. Okay, So the reference level then, if you put the reference level right near, we'll do the left hand side, you don't want to put the reference level down there because that's measuring another line. You really want to put it up here 
at this peak, so that's 7.9 on that side. Same thing over here on the left hand side. If I put the reference level here, I'm in the middle of another calcium line. That's bogus. So I really want the reference level to be up around here. Because the reference level is measuring what we call the continuum flux. Sort of the black body spectrum of the star that's unaffected by stellar absorption lines at that particular wavelength. So you're going to have to move this around to make sure that you're in the continuum. Obviously you don't want to put the reference level over here because now I'm in the bottom of another feature. And I would make an erroneous measurement. So this one's a little bit difficult. It was, you know, it's, so it's around 7 there. And, you know, it's around 8 there. So something like 7.5 would be a good measurement for this line. So this is a procedure that you do on each of the lines. Suppose we wanted to measure the strength of this line here. I'm not even going to tell you what it is, but it'd be the same thing. You would make a window on the line. I'm not going to zoom in. And then you need to move this reference level. This line is relatively clean. It's 5 on that side, and it's 5 on that side. So the strength of this line, 5 units, is less than the strength of this line here, which we measure to be about 7.5 units. And that's how you basically do this. Bye-bye.